Okay, my friends, this is going to be a very hard for you a physicist and highly advanced scientist to accept. However, I have found muons in Cheryankov radiation. Now, they're talking about the separation power of muons from the electron neutrinos. And then they talk about the Cheryankov angle creating pions and kaons and the resolution and the number of photoelectrons per ring depending upon the way they're hitting them and so forth. And I can show all this with our, our um, light research. Okay, now, get your physicist friends or your professors and ask them about this. We started with light. That is a pulsed red laser particle. And here's where the pulsed red laser was coming out and accelerated and split the black and the white apart. Just exactly what they said at Fermi Lab in CERN. They have seen those particles, only they're hidden head on. We're going through a Venturi. A Venturi means that we're concentrating the power and splitting those two particles. You see? The black and the white. The white now is the Cheryankov radiation. See? It's the electron shower. That's the white. All right, if you can read that, Cheryanko radi radiation from electron showers. And this is Cheryanko from a muon produced. And it just stays exactly the same, the black one. The white turns into a shower. And here it is right here. Before it turned into a shower, it was this particle. Which is what they would call, this would be a gluon. A glowy and a black. That's what they see in their experiments. They don't know where they came from, they just see them. That, that is, that's literally an electron, because you don't get one of these without one of those. They're just like two bar magnets, they glue together, just like this. All right. Now, the black ones are fixed. You see fixed? They don't change size. This one can get big and puffy and glow and make it because it's interacting with the particles that are in front of it. This one here is getting diminished because it's being just dragged away. Now, you wouldn't notice that except that it was enhanced. And then you, if you look down here, you can see the concussion particles. I think you can. See those little particles in front? That's why it's glowing more than the other one because it's concussing. And you have the same thing, if you look up what's the point by Fermi Lab, it'll show you these exact same particles. And it says that's a fixed one, and these are point particles, which are, have all the energy. And that's what I say over here is electron flood theory. There is no giant protons. That's just nonsense. There is no proton giant like that. Protons are a ton of little, these particles, which are gluons. And every gluon is made by a muon, and an electron neutrino. And we separated the muon electron neutrino as I just showed you. There it is right there. They're separated. So and, and I know they can separate and I've seen a lot I have so much information on this is stunning. Now the only difference between a proton and a neutron is that a proton is an uneven number. So it has a charge. And the charge is the same as the electron, which is in the orbit out here, because it's all it is is missing one electron. So it wants another electron plug, plugged into it, but there might be enough electrons coding it. It says, I don't want you to come in here. Stay away. I and mean, you can stay that far away, that's it. Because they always want to get into that dark matter that's in the center. That's very, very attractive. So, fission, fusion, in between, we got some serious energy. Now, this literally is what light is. It spins to the right and goes forward. And the, the, the article I was showing you, we'll go back to in a second, makes all these claims, but in such complicated ways that the average human being is never going to figure it out. But this is a highly polar particle. It's got a positive and a negative end, basically. But they flop. That's these two particles here. All right, coming forward is the, the charge, and it's a downspin. When that flips, it'll be the upspin, and the white one will be up at the top, and that one will be discharged, and this one will be getting puffed up. And that's what they do. They just wobble down the road. 
and they always spin to the right. Right hand rule goes to, to the right. All right, think about this. We're just shooting one laser head on through the Venturi. It's bubbling out here. I think the black balls, which are, are literally hammering the white through, because the white can't get back out. What if you put another laser coming this direction? You know, they were talking about the angle of the cherry ink off, and another one coming this direction, and forced these white particles to, because this is going to have all these black balls with them, too. All right, so we're going to be doing this with the whole thing, and we're going to be squirting this through there. And then hopefully on the other side, if we could right, somewhere right about there put a harvest device going down to batteries or whatever you want, run your car or whatever you want. You carry it around in your hand like a little, like a little lunch box. All right, and I think if we could use that angle of cherry ink off smearing, we could force more particles in there. And lasers are dirt cheap, and we should be able to tap back off and run these lasers for free. Now just in case anybody wants to scream about me using copyrighted materials, I am perfectly allowed to do that because my work is transformative. I'm not just showing you this to say, oh, look at this, look at this, like it's a, some kind of novelty. I'm saying this is not right. Transformative. And it's not right. And it's the Department of Energy. These people should be watching what I'm showing because I'm showing what they're looking for. 1978, they did a big convention about how we could use light instead of protons because protons just create nothing but debris they know that and they say it's much much cleaner if we could somehow figure out how to use photons that's 50 years ago or more okay my friends science alert scientists are about to fire up the most powerful laser in the u.s 20th of september 2022 the most powerful laser in the U.S. right now is getting turned on to send its first pulses this week, enabling researchers to get a new level of insight into plasma physics and particle accelerators. Well, that's what we do is plasma physics and particle accelerators. And this is what they're going to do. I'm just going to go one minute to show you what they're going to do, and then I'll show you what we do. The Zeus laser is the Z1 equivalent ultra short pulse laser system. It's a, a facility which is funded by the National Science Foundation. It will be an ultra short pulse laser system. Uh, unique characteristics of the facility are that it will house the Zeus laser, which will be operating at three petawatts. It will be the highest power laser in the US, and it will um, be a user facility to researchers, primarily academic researchers from the US, will come. University of Michigan to do experiments and also it'll be available for researchers from around the world as well. What you would do if you're interested in doing an experiment, you submit a proposal online and then there's a, a panel which uh, University of Michigan doesn't really have anything to do with and that panel looks at all the proposals and picks the ones which are the best. It'll be used for fundamental research into uh, plasma physics and particle accelerators on a very small scale. And so the all right, this is exactly, exactly what I do. Let me show you. And I don't submit proposals and things. I'm just going to show them what I do, and maybe somebody will take it on. I'm not doing this research. I, we've done it already, so I just want to show somebody. And what they're, they're doing right now, they're going to be blasting this into helium and trying to explode helium and to make plasma out of that. We can just break the light particles apart. We've done it over and over and over. Very simple. See, here's the thing. They don't understand what light is. Light is a charged particle all by itself. Plasma physics is the study of charged particles and fluids interacting with self-consistent electric and magnetic fields. It is basic research discipline that has many different areas of application. Space, astrophysics, controlled fusion. That's what we're doing is controlled fusion. Just to have excessive amounts of power doesn't do you any good. You're going to break apart these black particles from the white particles. This is what they're doing at CERN and Fermilab. They found these, the smallest particles exist. We can create them all day long. There they are right there. These are the ones they show at Fermilab, and it's an article called What's the Point by Don Link in the Fermilab. And here is the point right here. These are the same exact particles, and they do exactly what he says. 
These are the glowy little, burny little particles that have almost no mass. These two are the heavy-duty blaster particles. Now, half of that is an electron. The two of them together like this, which is, this is the same particle, this is just an enhanced version. The two of them together are a photon. That photon will bounce from you. If you only had one black and one white together, that's an electron that will burn in you. Now, what is Cherenkov radiation? Here it is right here. The black one separates from the white one. The white one turns into a shower, and the black one fissions. The fission is the mutual, well, they, they, they both break apart. So this is fission, and this is fusion. This is controlled fusion. And we can do this all day long, squirt it right through. We're doing this just over and over and over and over and over all day long. No, just accidental bumping. And that's what they're doing, is just accidental bumping. And then saying, oh, look at what we did. We got fusion. And don't forget, we just took regular pulse red laser. Only, hey, they got extreme number of pulses. We got, just got a construction laser. So it's pip, 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 pip. But it does the same thing. When it starts smashing at the Venturi, the black particles, which I showed you here, the black and white, the black ones separate, and they smash the hell out of the white ones and make the white ones squirt right out the other side. The black ones, don't know, they never go through, only the white ones. So this is fission, no question whatsoever. This is fusion, no question whatsoever. And these are the particles, which are the Higgs fields, no question whatsoever. And these are the white spray that's coming out over here. You see it? We're shooting the light down this way. And the spray is coming here, and then it's recombining right here and creating the fields. This is the spray. You see them? They don't even know about that spray. You see that? That is staggering amount of energy. That's that white, white spray. And then when it hits into the atmosphere again, it creates all the Higgs fields, the spinning little fields, because they're combining back with the black particle. Now they're talking about dividing fields, I think. These are the dark fields caroming off to this side. There's no dark fields here at all. There's nothing but white. So we are able to sort of slide them off one side to the other. The red came directly through and it was just completely the same on both sides. But if you put one pin in front of the other back, you're going to hit one ahead of the other and get your black out of the way and then your white will come through. And don't forget, this is from Fermilab. They say neumon neutrino, which is the black ball, and the white ball, the electron neutrino, divide into muons. They never, it doesn't change. And the electron goes into a shower. No question whatsoever. If these are correct, and we have a muon neutrino, electron neutrino, we have increased the energy trillion, like a trillion times. That's free energy. So if they want to use their fancy labor, laser to do research, why don't they try this? Those black balls are just slamming. If they were going a zillions of times a second, I mean, they're way up to millions. It it would just not let any of that white come back out. Because the white is getting splashed and it's shooting back out and shooting around. If we, I, I thought about doing it this way, having one come straight forward, which is what we have now, but also have one coming from this side and coming from this side, sort of, sort of circle it and force it through this side. Lasers are cheap. Raw energy, trillions of electron volts is not cheap. If I'm, t if I'm correct and what I'm talking about is right, we could have something like this, like a lunchbox you could carry around. It's an old Geiger counter, but something like this. And you could have any kind of power you want it coming out of AC, DC, 120, 220, whatever you want. Any voltage, 50, 60 cycles, it doesn't matter. It's very, very simple to do that. If you can create enough juice to come out of here, just like you were plugging into a wall or plugging into your car, and that's what it would do. It would be able to run your car, run houses, run anything you want. Just carry it around. No grid, no nothing. So if they want ideas, this is a pretty good idea. Okay, my extremely simple friends. It's a simple Roger. And this is the only particles that exist. Actually, these two right here are the only particles that exist. You glue the two of them together, which is the W boson, which is the white one, and the Z boson, which is the black one, you glue the two of them together and you have what's called a gluon, which is nothing more than really an electron. 
So that's an electron. You take two electrons back to back because that's nothing more than a dipole bar magnet. You glue them back to back and you have a photon. Photons will bounce, electrons will burn. When these two slam into each other, they create these very elegant Higgs patterns of spinning patterns. All the rest of this stuff is just byproducts of these particles slamming together. That's it. Those are the only two things that exist. So let me demonstrate fully. However, this is the this is the new model, and again, the black one is the muon. Alright, or they can call it a Z boson, that's fine. The W is the white boson, which is really what is an electron neutrino. These are neutrinos. Those two are the neutrinos. Forget all this stuff. This is all wrong. So those two neutrino, neutrinos, when they bind together after being separated, because they can separate, and we did separate them. I've shown you, or will show you. We separate them right here. When you do that, you have enormous amounts of energy. And I show that quite well, too. So this is the new model, and atoms are nothing more than just a whole batch of these little particles. A uh, proton is 1835 of these little dipoles, 1835, and they look approximately like that. That's what a proton is. And is it a certain number, it just becomes stable. There's something about it. So, and it it's stabi stability. If you add a, an electron or two or three electrons, it'll be stable for a half-life of so a certain amount of time. And then they'll go buzzing off, and it'll become stable in a different particle. But right now, they say that's a proton. And they can smash them to bits. And they see these two exactly the same way I showed you, those two particles. They know they're there. They know they're the smallest particles. They just didn't know that they were glued together. Uh, you know, they see them glued together as a gluon. They see photons just like that. They see all those particles. Then they sometimes they see them up, sometimes they're down. Sometimes they see little bits and extra pieces fitting in. It, so this is nothing more than a particle zoo of particles that exist from these two particles. Case closed on the number of particles that exist.